This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos, and today we're going to take a look at how to use the Pythagorean theorem uh, when we're dealing with a triangle. Now, the Pythagorean theorem only works uh, this special Pythagorean relationship uh, only works with a right triangle. So uh, that has to be a triangle with a right angle in it. In other words, a triangle that has a 90 degree angle is the only type of triangle that we can impose the Pythagorean relationship upon it. Alright, let's say we have a problem where we have a right triangle and what we're trying to do is solve for the hypotenuse. Now, first of all, you should know that there are three different sides to this triangle and they have special names. The two shorter sides, that's these two sh sides right here, uh, they are called legs. They're the legs of the right triangle. Now, uh, the way we could tell uh, the hypotenuse, that's the other name, the, the reason I know this is the hypotenuse of the triangle is because it's opposite the right angle. So anytime you have the right angle, you go on the opposite side of the uh, triangle, and then you will find the hypotenuse. Uh, all right, so now that we have our, our situation uh, set up here where we know what side is which, legs, and then the hypotenuse, that'll help us solve this problem. Now when you see this relationship, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you have to know what these letters represent. And a and b represent the legs. So you have a and b are legs of the right triangle. Okay, and then c in this relationship is defined as the hypotenuse. So it, c is always going to be the longer side. All right, so when you see that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you know that the C is the hypotenuse and the other two guys are legs. All right, now uh, what are we going to do with this? Well, what we are going to do is be given some information. Like, let's say we know this side is four feet. Let's say we know this side is six feet. And a problem that will usually come up is uh, on a test uh, or some kind of assessment, they'll say, what is the length of the hypotenuse? All right, in other words, we don't know what this side is. Since it is the hypotenuse, I'm going to automatically label it with the C because C is what we use for the hypotenuse. Again, these are legs, so I'm going to call this leg B and I'm going to call this leg A. All right, now I'm going to throw this all into the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so here's this equation, right? A squared plus B squared equals c squared. All right, so we put in 4 for a, we put in 6 for b, and what we'll do is we'll follow this. We'll follow this equation, and this equation will help us solve for the missing side. All right, well, order of operations would say before you add, you have to square these values powers first, right? So 4 squared, 4 times 4 is 16. 6 squared, 6 times 6 is 36. All right. So now I'm going to add these two together. I'm going to get 52 equals c squared. All right, so I've got c squared equals 52. Now I need to get rid of this square because I don't want c squared. I want c. I want to know what's the length of the hypotenuse. The length of the hypotenuse is c. So what we're going to do to get rid of the square, well, we know that there are op opposite or what's called inverse operations. And the inverse operation, in other words, the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And it turns out that that square and square root are going to cancel each other because they're inverse operations. So I'm going to get C over here. I'm going to get the square root of 52 over here. So if we were to use a calculator, because some teachers want a decimal answer, if I were to throw this in the calculator, the calculator tells me it's 7.21. And actually, I should put, uh, it's not equal, it's approximately equal, right? Because it's I had to round it 7.21, just rounding it to the nearest hundredth. 
this would be a perfectly acceptable answer. Now what some teachers instead want you to do is they want you to simplify the radical to get not the approximate answer, they want to get what's the exact answer. Um, okay, and, and this is the exact answer, but it's not in the most simplified form. So what you can do is you could take that 52 and you can make a factor tree and you break up the 52 into smaller numbers. Now it turns out if you do make a factor tree, 52 turns out to be 2 times 26. But 26 is 2 times 13. Okay, so that's what the square root of 52 is equal to, right? I'm just breaking up the square root of 52. So 2 times 2 times 13 is really 52. Oh, but, whoa, wait a minute. That is the, that's 4 right there, right? That's the value 4. We're taking the square root of 4. Now we know that the square root of 4 is 2. But what's the square root of 13? I don't know, some weird decimal number. There's nothing more I could do to break up the 13. So sometimes what people do is they write C as an exact answer, but a simplified exact answer, and they'll write it like this. You know, which one's correct? Well, it depends. Here you get your decimal value answer, which is an approximation, or you have the exact simplified, the radical has been simplified as much as possible answer. So they're both great answers depending on what we're looking for. All right, so this is how we use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for the hypotenuse when it's missing. We'll do another video on trying to figure out how to use the theorem when we're trying to uh, get a leg. And that'll be another video. All right, so make sure you go, go to mathguide.com, check out our interactive quizzes, our activities, and videos. Take care.